Good to see you. Good to be in the Lord's house. Enjoyed this morning. Good seeing you here. Good to have 11th hour. Good to have Brother Patrick. Good to see you. Are you happy? Few of you. The rest of you get happy. How about page 120? And you saw, look it up on, eh, just stand up and sing. Victory in Jesus. Good to have you here. Bless God. Jacob is here with the honey out there. You see the honey? I'm thinking today, I don't have honey, and Jacob, I, I don't know how to get hold of Jacob. And so anyhow, he's here with the best honey in the world. All right, are you happy? Say amen. There you go. That's better. All right, here we go. Jim Hill one time, years ago, 
first there is when no heart aches no more clouds in the skies no more tears to dim the eyes all is peace on that happy golden shore oh what a day glorious day that will be sing it big now i want to hear it oh what a day that will be when my jesus lashes and i look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he night goes to 11th hour, so everything that Amen. you give tonight goes to bless their ministry. Brother Nelson, would you pray for us? And it's good to have 11th Hour with us tonight. You make them welcome as they come to sing for us this evening.
the King of Kings, who's making intercession for River Saint redeemed. His mercy reaches low and his majesty is high. The lily of the valley, the broken bread of life, the door to heaven's glory, the bright and morning star. Everything I ever needed, he is all that and more. I want to praise him. to my soul, eternal rock of ages, the precious cornerstone, he's the Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end, the author of salvation, he's my dearest friend, anytime I need him, all I have to do is call, his holy name is Jesus, he's my all in all, I want to praise him. in here deserve a devil's hell but because of Jesus Christ dying on Calvary and saving our souls we don't have to go there I think that's something to praise the Lord about but uh, we are so glad uh, like I said this morning to be back at Sefner and uh, thank y'all again for having us I'm gonna be honest with you all three of us are pretty full up here we had to put on our elastic skirts and our elastic pants because you know we got to hit up Parksdale when we're here <laughs> So uh, y'all pray for us tonight. <laughs> that was free, by the way. But uh, no, we, we love you all, and you all are like family to us. And uh, for those of you that may be seeing us for the first time, would you raise your hand for us? Just a few of you. All right. Well, for the few of you that um, don't know who we are, my name is Amber Epinette Saunders. This right here is Miss Jaquita Lindsay, and that right there is Logan Smith. We just picked him up on the side of the road. <laughs> No, I, I love these guys, and I, I like to brag on them. Um, the type of hearts uh, that are behind these singers um, amaze me, even to this day. Um, Logan, he'll be celebrating three years with us in April. Jaquita's been with the group now for seven years, and uh, God has been so faithful to bless me with such amazing, not only singers and songwriters, but the heart behind it is, just amazes me. Um, Logan, of course, he's no stranger to Southern gospel music, and uh, he... Um, he used to do the Vestal Goodman impression. Now, when he was 12, he used to travel. I know he doesn't look much older than that. But, but when he was 12, he used to travel with the Gaither Homecoming Tour, and he used to do the Vestal Goodman impression. And uh, for those of you that may not know who that was, first of all, shame on you. But, but second of all, Vestal Goodman was, in fact, um, one of the, the greatest um, legends of Southern gospel music, and she was, in fact, a lady. Amber's got jokes tonight, don't she? <laughs> 
But of course, Logan is now 23. His voice has changed. But uh, um, before I introduced Jaquita, I told them that I was going to get you to do a Vestal song. So, uh, so he, I'm not lying to him. You're going to do it, or you'll be looking for a new job. Um, <laughs> But I also love Miss Jaquita. She um, was in a very successful job for about nine years in Little Rock, Arkansas. And um, she ended up selling her house, quitting her job to come on the road full time and fully trust in the Lord. And uh, that's the type of people that I love having in these groups. And so one more time for Miss Jaquita and Logan. How about it for that Vestal song now? Would y'all like to hear it? Still I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now well, I started out traveling for the Lord many years ago And I've had a lot of heartache and a lot of grief and woe But when I would stumble then I could humble down And there I would say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now Well I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now Gotta make it to heaven somehow Go oh, the devil takes me and he tries to turn me around He's offered everything, this God and name All the will of our own and world and kind If I could still I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now Well, there's nothing in this world that'll ever take the place of God's love All the silver and gold that couldn't buy you a touch from him There I would say it, thank the Lord I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now God, I'll make it to heaven somehow Oh, the devil took me and he tries to turn me around He's offered everything that's God and name All the wealth I want, the world and fame If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now well,
know, as we sing these songs time and time again, and yeah. I know I'm not just talking about singers, but I'm talking about the preachers as well. Everybody that's up on this stage, we, we can see you just as you can see us. And we're not oblivious to the fact that there's not a soul in this room that hasn't gone through something this year. And maybe in the past years, and we're either coming out of a valley or going into one. That's life. We can't be at home in a place that's not our home. But I was reminded, sitting at home for four months when we were not able to travel and sing and, and actually um, live out our call, um, I, I realized just how blessed we were. In the Parsons, y'all know what I'm talking about. The little things that we would take for granted every day were big things to God that he would send our way. He taught us how to be still and know that he is God. But now that doesn't mean be still and be lazy. That means being still while moving forward in his presence and in his spirit. And God showed us that there's even blessings in the smallest of things. Oh, yeah. And sometimes we got to stop getting so busy doing God's work and forgetting a minute. And we got to just take some time just with him. That's the sweetest thing that we could ever know. And he's the sweetest friend that we'll ever have. Especially in your times of trouble. And you know what else I found out, Pastor Will? I found out that when you find yourself in the midst of the deepest, darkest valley... Jesus Christ cares about that detail. It's not just the whole picture to him. The very things that we don't even want to talk about that are crushing our souls, Jesus Christ cares about that detail. And in a world that we live in today, there's a lot of crushing that goes on. But I'm thankful that the Lord doesn't stop at the crushing. He continues to fulfill us and help us through this life until we get home. So there's one more song that I want um, us to sing for y'all. And then, Brother Patrick, I've been looking forward to this. I have an impression of you, by the way. An impersonation, if you would. Impersonation. Every time he calls or every time I call him, Hi, sister, I Amber. It's so good to talk to you, sister. I love this man of God. We appreciate you. (laughs) Just what does he But we appreciate him, and I can't wait to to hear what God has for us tonight. But there's a song here called How Much Broken is Enough, and I hope it'll be a blessing to you tonight.
the Lord. Let's give them another hand. Wonderful job. It's good to have Brother Patrick from Sweet Gum, North Carolina, up in Robbinsville, North Carolina. You give him a hand as he comes to preach for us this evening. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Ain't that one? Boy, I appreciate the 11th hour. I love them. Love Sister Amber, even though she's making fun of me tonight. <laughs> Sister, that's all right. I'm used to it. Now, she done pretty good. She did, but Brian Byer makes me turn my head. I'm like, is that me? <laughs> now, he, he got me down pat. There ain't no doubt about that. But I tell you, you're looking at a fellow that loves to have a good time. Hey, man, God has blessed me so much, and I'm just thankful to be saved tonight. I want to take this time for a moment, and I want to thank Pastor Will, the church, for allowing us to be here. I don't believe it's coincidence that we're here tonight. I believe it's divine appointment of God. I was a bit overwhelmed whenever he told me I'd be preaching between Dr. David Crow and Dr. David Gibbs, two of my favorite preachers, two of the greatest men of God that I know and look up to. And here I am, a little old country boy from the hills and mountains of North Carolina in Sefner, Florida, standing in the pulpit where the greatest men of God that I know stand and preach. I'm being all my favorite preachers preach right here, Will. And I love Young's and I love this church. This is one of my most favorite places to be. When Will texted me a while back and told me it's camp meeting had been canceled my heart sunk within me because this meeting does something for me every year. It start, it gets me crunk back up, Hoy. It gets me going. This meeting helps me. It's part of my life. I've been coming down here for going on eight years, I think, and I praise God for that. I, boy, I'm missing Brother Roger Duncan. I'll tell you, I've stayed with him, I believe, seven out of the last eight years, and I love him and Diane. And, and boy, I tell you, what a great man of God. I, I took Jennifer by that little house and we drove by last night. And I said, honey, I said, we've stayed in there and we've stayed up late. I said, we've laughed, we've cried, we've prayed, we've worshipped, we've watched national championships in there. I love it down here with y'all. Y'all are my family, amen. So it's so good to be here, and I just wanted you to know how I felt about you, and uh, I'm thankful for this opportunity. I feel like a revved up race car coming around the third turn, and the finish line's in sight, praise God. I feel good down in my soul tonight. I'm glad to be saved. October of last year, amen, I've been saved 11 years, praise God, and I thank God for that. They sung the song, go, hey man, I thank God I'm saved, hallelujah. They sung that song this morning talking about uh, if I knew me, and I was thinking about if I knew me, hey man, I would still be on drugs. If I knew me, I'd be in prison. If I knew me, I'd be in hell. But thank God I know him, amen. <laughs> hallelujah, boy, that's the first time I got to hear that song, and I thank God for that. The song Sister Amber sang for just a moment ago, Hey man brought me through one of the toughest times in my ministry. He sees what we don't. And I thank God for the unction and the anointing that's on her and that group. We love them. Boy, I tell you, I'm just happy, happy, happy down in my soul. February the 10th of this year, I'll be preaching 11 years. Hey man, started preaching four months after I got saved. Had to preach, couldn't get out of it. Hey man, I started preaching before that. It's just most of it's on my riding lawnmower, I guess. Uh, amen. But uh, God is good, and I thank God for all that He's uh, done for us. And, and we love the Lord tonight. We really do. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I've been preaching long enough to know that how much water they give you is how long they want you to preach. <laughs> now, these right here is what we call 10 minute bottles. <laughs> amen. If you got your Bible, turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'll use this simply for a platform tonight to set up the topic that I'll be preaching on. Don't intend on staying here, but I want to deal with where we're at right now in America, where we're at. Uh, I, I want to look at it tonight, but I don't intend on dwelling on it. I'm just going to take one word out of this text tonight and use it for my provoking thought that the Lord had me to preach on here this evening. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, I'll be, begin reading in verse number 1 tonight, and the Bible says this, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be... I want you to listen to this and think about where we're at. And this was wrote 
close to 2,000 years ago. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And these are character character flaws that we find in men and women in the day that we're living in. I believe that every one of these things are showing up in men and women all around us today. But God has my attention so much there in verse number 2 on that little word, unthankful. Boy, I tell you, we're living in a time where it's easy to be unthankful. All you've got to do is take your eyes off of God for just a minute and start looking at what's going on around us, and we forget to be thankful. But I want to preach tonight, if God will be my helper for just a few moments of time, on what it takes to have a thankful heart, because we tonight have so much to thank Him for. If you'll turn with me to 1 Thessalonians, I'm going to read one more verse and then I'll pray and then we'll turn to the book of Luke and we'll get into the message. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. I want you to hear this now. We just read to you how men will be in the last days. We're seeing all these things. And I want you to think about this. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 15, verse number 18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God will help me in just a moment after we pray. I want to turn to Luke chapter 17. I want to preach tonight on what it takes to have a thankful heart. Father, as we bow tonight in your presence, God, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house once again. Oh, God, we thank you for saving us, Lord. We thank you for these, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, for the wonderful singing, God, that's already took place here tonight. God, for this privilege, Lord, to come together and worship God in these last days. There's no doubt about it, God, that we're in perilous times, Father. Lord, we see the signs all around us, God. Oh, Lord, I pray tonight Father that you would help us God in spite of what's going on in this world in spite of our situations and circumstances in spite of everything God to have a thankful heart I pray you'd help me God tonight Lord we love you Father we ask you Lord to anoint our lips one more time this side of heaven Father right now God for this message and Lord I pray that you'd let me say only that which you'd have me to and nothing else I pray that you'd open hearts and minds and ears God that they may hear and Father I pray that it not just be words tonight but God that your spirit would anoint and season God this message Father I pray God that it would not return void Lord but it would go out and resonate in the hearts of men and women and God that we could leave here tonight God being better people and Father I pray this evening God Lord if these altars are used at all Father we'll thank you I thank you for the one that's already come and the help she's received God, we praise you tonight for all you've done. We praise you for who you are. God, we ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Bible says tonight that men and women will be unthankful in the last days. But it tells us right here in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and verse number 18 that we are to be thankful because this is the will of God concerning Christ Jesus in us. God wants us to be thankful. Luke chapter number 17. This is where the message will be coming from tonight. I'll read this scripture. I'll try my best uh, to follow the Lord and do that which He'd have me to do. The Bible says in Luke chapter 17, starting in verse number 11. I'll give you a second to be there. The Bible says this, And it came to pass as He went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. 
which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Sometimes I preach this message and I preach it under a title of Are We a 10% Church? God help us. Jesus was concerned about where were the nine at. And he said, Here there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. He calls him a stranger. And he said unto him, Arise and go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I want you to notice first of all what's taking place. I'll set up this little passage of scripture that we've read tonight. Wonderful story. Some great men of God have preached this. I want to just share with you tonight what God's laid upon my heart. And what's happened here is Jesus, hey man, is, is traveling and he's going towards Jerusalem. And the Bible teaches us that he went right through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, which goes against everything that the Jews believed in. Whenever, whenever the Jews were taken captive into Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar, there were so many Jews still left around Jerusalem, they didn't take everybody. And the Samaritans come up at this time and they took unto them Jews and they joined themselves together. And, the, and we learn that, that in this, whenever the Jews came back out of captivity and these Samaritans started coming, they called them half-breeds. They, they, they said they were just half Jews and they wouldn't have anything to do with them. So it's very significant tonight that Jesus in his way to Jerusalem went right through the midst of Samaria and Galilee and the Bible says this, as in he entered into a certain village. I thank God for that tonight. I want you to think about this this evening and if this don't make you want to turn flip-flops in your soul. I want you to think about this tonight. How many of you can remember when you got saved? Boy, if you can't, you ain't got saved, amen. It's something you'll never forget. It's something you'll never get over. But I want you to think about this, the significance tonight of a certain village. Hey, man, Jesus came right to where these ten lepers were at. He passed through. He was on his way. He was going somewhere. But he took time to come where they were. Hey, man, that David, he saved me in October of 2009. Out of all the people in the whole wide world, at that very moment, do you know what Jesus done? Brother Ron, he came to where I was, amen. He came to a certain place. I thank God for that. The Holy Spirit does that work. And I praise God for His Holy Spirit. He sought me out that day. And that's what He done right here. Praise God, He came by a place where He knew that there was needs at. And when He rised in this certain village, I believe just whenever He stepped into town, let's read what the Bible says. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. Not only did Jesus come to where they were at, but they acknowledged that he was there and they met him. Praise God. I want to tell you something tonight. God will go so far and then you're going to have to do the rest. Amen. God will deal with your heart, but you've got to respond. That's what happened here tonight. Hey man, Jesus put himself where the need was at. Ain't it amazing tonight how he knows the needs? If you study your Bible much, you read in Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 8 that he knows our needs before we even ask. There's nothing tonight that's hid from God. There's nothing tonight that God does not know about. Sometimes we find ourselves having a pity party. Sometimes we find ourselves all alone. Sometimes we find ourselves like Elijah in the cave under the juniper tree hiding from God wanting to just quit and give up and end it all. Sometimes we find ourselves in that place but do you know that even then God knows our needs? The Bible tells us that the very hairs of our head 
dead are numbered. The Bible tells us that not one sparrow falls from the sky that he does not know about. And he cares so much more for us than he does for the sparrows. I praise God tonight that he knows our needs. They're not hid from him. He knew that there was ten lepers in this certain village. He knew what was wrong with them. How the rest of the world didn't consider them. They were outcasts. They were unclean. They had to separate their self. But Jesus went by where they were at and he presented his self unto them and they didn't miss the opportunity. The Bible teaches that whenever they seen him, they met him and they cried out. Listen to this. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. We're in the house of God tonight, a wonderful place to meet the Lord. Amen. This is His house. I believe it. I've been coming down here long enough. I've experienced God here every service, every time. This is the Father's house. It's a wonderful place. But when we come together and God passes by, why would we miss an opportunity to have our needs met? So many people, when Jesus shows up, and when Jesus passes by, they sit still. They don't lift up their voices and they don't cry aloud oh my goodness what a mistake the Bible says in Isaiah 55 and 6 seek ye the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near what if these men would have just stood there that day and let Jesus pass them on by oh I beg you tonight if you have a need in your life whatever it may be whenever Jesus is near to call on him Now this is just, I'm just preaching right now. I'm about to get to the message, all right? I know you're thinking, I thought he said he was going to preach on what it takes to get a thankful heart. I'm just preaching the scripture. And they lifted up their voices. Oh, and they said, Jesus, Master. How to work, (laughs) boy. Woo! Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Woo, glory, hallelujah. They cried out to Jesus, amen. It'll work every time. Don't let him pass you by. When he's near, call on his name, praise God. The Bible says this, and when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. He didn't tell them you're clean. He didn't tell them if you'll do this or do that or if you'll go wash yourself or if you'll go confess or and tell him that, he said, just go show yourselves to the priest. You know, what God wants us to do is not grievous. If God's commands are grievous to us, there's something wrong. It's a blessing to live for the Lord. It's a blessing to do what God would have us to do. He simply told them, just go show yourselves unto the priest. They didn't discuss their condition. They just said, Lord, have mercy on us. They didn't talk about how bad they were. They just cried out. He said, just go show yourselves unto the priest. The Bible said, and it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. While on their way to the priest, they, Jesus walks into town. The lepers see him. No doubt they've heard about him. They knew who he was. His fame. He had been noised abroad what he had been doing. He had power. He was healing. He was forgiving sins. He was cleansing. All the lame were walking. The blind were seeing. Praise God. This man named Jesus. If he got around where you was at, you could get some help. And they knew it. So they cried out and he said, Hey, go show yourself to the priest. They just headed that way. I find no hesitation in the Word of God. It don't say that they thought about it or or they talked amongst themselves or they questioned it. I believe they just started going to the priest. The Bible says this, that while they were on their way, that they were cleansed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ain't that wonderful tonight? They were cleansed. I want you to notice something right there about this scripture in verse 13, 14, and 15. Seven times the words that are used. They, their, and them. Ten lepers. Seven times. Talking about them. 
They were cleansed. All ten of them. All ten of them got cleansed from their leprosy. Verse 15, very important. Let's take notice. And one of them. When he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. I want to say this tonight. If you're going to have a thankful heart, you're going to have to acknowledge what God's done for you. If you're going to have a thankful heart, you're going to have to acknowledge who he is. How about this tonight? Not only did he notice what had happened to him while on his way, while listening to what Jesus said to do, and on his way, and just following the command of the Lord, he he looked down and maybe it was his arm, maybe it was a leg, maybe it was all over him, but Ronnie looked down and the leprosy was gone. I mean, he was gone. I don't know how long he had been an outcast. I don't know how long he had been unclean. I don't know how long this disease had been upon him, how sick that he was. But the Bible says that he just went on his way and and he looked down and he was clean, praise God. And the Bible said that with a loud voice, he glorified God. Why is it important tonight that we have a thankful heart? Why is it important tonight that we give God praise and glory? There's not one doubt in my mind. All ten of them left together. They didn't get too far from Jesus when they seen that they were clean. One turned back. One began to praise and glorify God. One began to thank Jesus. The others evidently went on their way. The Bible says tonight in the book of Romans chapter number 10, teaching us the way of salvation. For if a man with a heart he believeth unto salvation. And confession. With the mouth, verse 11 says, the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him, shall not be ashamed. Well, I tell you, God's been so good to us. We ought not cease to praise Him and thank Him. It is the will of God concerning you and me in Christ Jesus that we have a thankful heart. It's God's will. You want to get somewhere with God tonight? I'm going to tell you something. Try being thankful. Amen. Amen. You want to get help from God? You want the blessings poured out from God tonight? Try being thankful. Even in the midst of trouble, even in the midst of hard times, even with what's going on around us. Oh, it's so easy today to be negative. It's so easy to be unthankful. It's so easy to get our eyes off the goodness of God. It's so easy right now. But we must focus on what God's done and who God is, and we must continue to be thankful even now, and give God glory and give Him praise. I want to say this tonight, and I was thinking about this as I was studying on this message. I've got a 17-year-old daughter, and I love her dearly. I mean, I love that girl. And naturally, I try my best to meet her needs. I want her to have everything that she needs, and we give her so much that she just wants. And, I, and I, I love to do that for her. I know what she needs. She's my girl. It's my responsibility to take care of her. But you know what? When she shows me appreciation for those things that I do for her, yeah. whew, that just makes me want to do so much more for her. I believe tonight it's the same way with God. The Bible says that the sun rises and sets on the evil and the good. The Bible says that it rains upon the just and the unjust. Oh, but how pleased is God whenever His children give Him thanks for who He is and what He's done. We should never cease to praise God. We should never quit thanking God. We should have a thankful heart tonight. The Bible says, And He fell down on His face at His feet, giving Him thanks. 
And he was a Samaritan. Yeah. He, it makes that specific here tonight. Yeah. He wasn't nothing to nobody else. Right. Nobody else cared anything about him. But it meant something to Jesus. Yeah. This one, he calls him later in the scripture a stranger. This one, this Samaritan that the Jews called a half-breed. He, not only was he a Samaritan, but he was a leper. I'll tell you what, he knew what God done for him. And he was thankful for it. The Bible said he fell down on his face, at his feet, giving him thanks. Oh my goodness, I just think about it. Haven't he just run back to him? He just fell down on his knees, fell down on his face, and he's just thanking him. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have we lost our thankful heart? Have we grown stale? Have we grown cold and indifferent? We need to get back to thanking God and praising God. I believe that we've been blessed so much that we don't really appreciate all that God's done for us. And every day we let the blessings of God go unthanked. So many things that God God does for us. They sung the song this morning and God moved in this place. Thank you Lord for your blessings on me. Oh so many times we must be reminded of how good that God is to us. So many times we get caught up in the busy pace of this life and the things going on around us. So many times we just take for granted a good home. So many times we take for granted the food on our table and the things that we have. So many times we just take it for granted. But God's been so good to us. I thank God tonight for my testimony. Sometimes I wish I didn't have the testimony I have. Sometimes I wish that I'd have been saved when I was little and, and lived for God all my life and didn't, didn't have all these regret things. But you know what? I am who I am by the grace of God. And God saved me out of that. And I praise him for it. I, sometimes I think, boy, I'm too country. Sometimes somebody makes fun of my voice, Amber. <laughs> but do you know how many times I've been somewhere and somebody's come from three aisles around the store and they've said, I didn't see you, but I could hear you. And I knew you was in here and it's good to hear your voice. God give me a unique voice. I am who I am by the grace of God and I'm thankful. I've been through things and faced things and seen things and had it not been for some of the things that I've been through, I may not be as thankful and as appreciative as I am, but I praise God tonight for my salvation above all. I praise God tonight for saving a sinner like me. I'll fall down on my knees. I'll give Him praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. I'm not going to hell tonight. Amen. I thank God for that. And then I begin to look, and I, I don't like talking a lot about things like this, but it just is what it is. When God saved me, me and my wife, our marriage was a wreck. I mean, she had every right to have walked out and left me. And she had a problem. People would have said, You've done the right thing. But you know what she done? She stuck with me. She kept praying and believing in God. And I thank God tonight. I thank God for my little daughter. I thank God for my friends. Oh, my Christian friends, my family. I thought I had a few friends when I was out there in the world. Oh, I'll tell you, I know what friends are now. I know what the love of God is. The night our little girl passed away, we come home from the hospital. I'd been on drugs for about 13 years, hard drugs for about eight. I'm not proud of this, but that night we come home from the hospital. There was not a meth dealer at my house. The owner of the ABC store never came by to see me. Hey, the local, the local beer salesman never checked on me. But you know who was there that night? 
You know who came by that night? Hey man, the very people that I'd pushed so far out of my life and told that I didn't want nothing to do with them. I had two pastors that night from the church that I was raised in and their wives that were there. One of my best friends that I grew up with that was a Christian and just announced his call to preach but we hadn't talked in years because of the way I was living. But he was there that night. One of my formal Sunday school teachers was there that night. You know who come by in my hour of need the family of God the children of God I praise woo <laughs> woo <laughs> I praise God I, I thank God tonight for his family it's the best family on earth I wouldn't trade the family of God for nothing this world's got it's a blessing and a privilege to be a child of God amen Woo. I may have been an old half-breed nobody. I might have been an old outcast leper. I might have been a spiritual Samaritan. But praise God, he brought me right in to his family. Hallelujah. I go places now, Brother Will, and I share my story. And I ain't shared nothing down here tonight. I mean, it's a story. I'm telling you, but I share my story. And people look at me and they say, I can't believe that was you. One man come and joined the church a while back. And he went with me. He's been going riding with me with revivals. And he said, I never knew you back then. He said, it is so hard for me to believe the stories you share. Ain't it amazing what God can do? I want to say this here tonight. Don't you let the devil tell you a lie. If you're here tonight and you've got needs in your life, whether they're physical, whether they're spiritual, whether they're financial, Oh, if you're here tonight and you and, and you just don't know what you're going to do, hey, don't quit thanking God for what He has done. Don't quit thanking God for the blessings that you do have. Don't you let the devil get you so down and discouraged and focused on that one thing. You look around you and open your eyes and begin to count. You know why today that men can't have a thankful heart and women can't have a thankful heart because they are blinded spiritually to the goodness of God the devil gets us looking at everything else oh and we quit thanking God for what he's done for us oh I tell you how it is tonight greed will blind you the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil my friends I want you to know tonight that greed can blind you spiritually from having a thankful heart the lust of this flesh and the lust of these eyes and the pride of life and the things that we deal with in this flesh can keep us from having a thankful heart to God a man can begin to look at a woman that he'd think would make a better wife than the one he's got and he'll be blinded to how how what a wonderful wife he has the devil is so crafty he'll ruin your marriage he'll destroy your home for years I'll have to be honest as a father I mean I just really didn't know how to be a father to tell you the truth but God's been teaching me but I'll tell you what I've done regretfully so for years I've looked at the flaws that my daughter has and I've focused more on the things that I think ain't right in her life instead of looking at what a wonderful precious young lady that she is and so many times we do that and I've got a wonderful daughter and I thank God for her and she's just so good and I praise God for her tonight but do you see how the devil blinds us and he keeps us from having a thankful heart pride, deceit bitterness boy any of you know somebody that's so bitter and I'll tell you, the Bible says grudge not one against another. But man, I preach in churches. I've pastored two churches. I've got family. I know these people tonight that's here in bitterness is keeping you from having a thankful heart. Unforgiveness is stealing from you. You know tonight that unforgiveness 
You know who it hurts, don't you? You're not getting to them. They're living their life. They don't care. Boy, it's hurting you. It's keeping you from being thankful and joyful and enjoying God and the Lord, the goodness of God. Bitterness, unforgiveness, it's destroying our church folk. There's just a few of us left. The number's getting slim around the houses of God. I'm telling you, if we, boy, I've heard these old timers preach for years. Billy Graham used to talk about the great falling away. He talked about how bad it was in the 70s. And look at it now. The old timers at the house, they preached about how bad it was. And look at it now. We're surely experiencing and seeing the great falling away that 2 Thessalonians speaks of. I don't want to quit having a thankful heart. The Bible said he fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? What number will you be counted in? We can take this as a 90 to 10% ratio. Here tonight, if we'd be honest, how many of us have truly come into this place as the Bible teaches to enter into His courts and come into His house all with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts. How many of us have truly come in here tonight with our mind on the Lord and thanking Him and praising Him? If we were to be honest, are we operating tonight as a 10% church? Where are the nine? Where's the other 90% that God has done something great for? I mean, they all got cleansed. Why do so many people save or say, but you don't see the fruit in their life? Why? Oh, it hurts me. It bothers me. It scares me. I worry about it. Where are the nine? Where are they at? Jesus wanted to know. I want to know. Why has nobody ever got a song of praise? A testimony, a shout, why the altar's empty. God help us to publicly and unashamedly thank God and praise God and lift our hands to heaven, use the altars, fall at His feet, humble ourselves before God. God resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble. Draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh unto you. Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. You need picked up here tonight. Try getting down. Try humbling yourself. You need a touch from God. Do as John the Baptist did and first decrease that he might increase. Pride will keep you from having a thankful heart if God passes by and Jesus is speaking. Respond while he's near. I'm trying to hurry. they are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. He said just one come back. And he said unto him, Arise and go thy way. I want you to notice. You remember what I told you about verses 13, 14, and 15? Seven times these words were used. They, thy, and them. I want you to notice this verse in verse 19. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I want to tell you something tonight. There's ten of them got cleansed. There's one of them got made whole. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. I'm glad I'm one of them. Amen. (laughs) Woo! Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm one of them. I ain't ashamed of it. Honey, I'll fall at his feet. I'll praise him and worship him. I'm not ashamed. I want to give him thanks. Mm. Boy, I love the Lord tonight. God is so good. Turn with me and I'll be through. I'm winding her up. You come get a song of invitation. I could preach all night, but uh, I'm about out of water. <laughs> First Philippians chapter 4. As they come get a song. What's it take to have a thankful heart? Well, you've got to acknowledge who he is. I mean, I want you to notice tonight that when he fell down, Brother Kenny, at his feet, the Bible said he glorified God. 
We've got to acknowledge what he's done. He looked down. He saw what God had done for him. Hey, so many you. Boy, God's done so much for you. Hey, some here tonight. It may have been 50 years ago, but your marriage was in a wreck. Your husband was a drunk. He was awful. He treated you bad, but you kept praying. And God saved you. There's some of you here tonight that you heard that dreaded word cancer. And it was nearly a death sentence, but God stepped in. You remember what he done for you? God, help us not to lose our thankfulness. God, help us to be thankful and to have a thankful heart. Listen to this tonight. First Philippians chapter 4. I want you to think about this. Have you ever noticed in the days we're living in how everybody wants to claim the promises of God? I mean, you can be living in absolute wickedness and sin. I see it on Facebook all the time. I'm about through with that mess. <laughs> so, so many people, why ain't you been on Facebook? Why ain't you been preaching on Facebook? God, well, it just, whew. man, I'll tell you, every time, it just, it's just awful stuff on there. And everybody wants to cuss on this line and then praise God over here. And get caught up in this wickedness and Man, I'll tell you, this blows my mind how that people claim the promises of God. But I've not found a promise in this book yet that didn't have a condition prior to it. (laughs) I've heard people so many times claim, Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Who don't want that? Raise your hand tonight if you don't want the peace of God keeping your heart and mind. Anybody here? Well, nobody in here is crazy at least. Amen. We all want the peace of God. <clears throat> Let's back up. Let's see what the Bible says. <clears throat> the Bible says prior to that, <laughs> prior to that, in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Sounds like public acknowledgement to me. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, circle it with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Now here's where, here's where you get it. What's verse 7 say? How does it start out? A little three-letter word that's so important. It says, and. Now, now if that was just a promise, why would it start out with and? If that wasn't, a, it, it would just say, the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. But see, that's a promise with an underlying condition, and it says, if you'll do this, and then God will do this. God help us tonight. God help us tonight. I want to help you. I hope I ain't hurt you. I come down here nothing but love. And this is what God laid on my heart the second that we'll call. I've studied it. I've prayed about it. Probably I had an eight-page wrote out message. And then I went tonight and I, and I sat in the motel room for two hours and I condensed it down to two pages. And then I got up here and I didn't even get it out. (laughs) Some of you will say it'd probably been a lot better if you did. But I tried my best to give you what God gave me. I want you to know tonight that we can all, we can all so easily get away from having a thankful heart. I've been trying to preach revivals preach for right now 11 years I've seen God move more in a few songs like thank you Lord for your blessings on me I've got so much to thank him for thank you Lord time and time well preacher we've sung him for so long and I've seen God bless them over and over and over and over I've, I've seen them songs in meetings 
get started singing them and sing them for 45 minutes with people flooding the altars and people praising God and crying and shedding tears. Why? Because when we're thankful, it touches God's heart. And when we're thankful, we become humble. And when we become humble, God moves. I want to ask you this question tonight. How long has it been since you've truly, truly just fell down and thanked Him? How long has it been? I'm going to get down. I'm going to pray. I'm going to thank Him as much as I ought to. I want you to search your heart tonight. As they sing, I want you to mind the Lord here this evening. Thank you.
Lord's here tonight. The Lord's moving. We don't want to get in the way. We're going to step back. If you need to come and pray, the altars are open as they continue to sing.
bless the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah, brother. Did this guy do a job tonight or what? <laughs> I tell you what. I tell you what. And I thought, I think we'll see more. We'll see more revival. Uh, we'll see the spirit fall more if we're just more thankful. Amen. If we're just more thankful. And uh, I'm telling you, of course, we weren't able to have our, our regular camp meeting. But you know, that doesn't worry God one bit. It doesn't matter at all. We can have these, this people, this group of people, and, and as long as we're here in one accord, God will show up. And it doesn't have to end. Amen? It doesn't have to end. And I, I pray, I, I pray God will take him back to his church and the other back to their church, and they'll have revival in their churches, and you'll have revival in your churches, and we'll be thankful in one accord, lifting up his holy name. I'm telling you, it's been a good place to be tonight. I didn't think one time about the Buccaneer gang. Amen. Amen. I, I, this is one of those things where you want to just stay, right? I mean, you just feel the presence and people are coming. I tell you what, that was, that was wonderful. Let's give him another hand tonight. I appreciate him coming. I'm going to ask the ushers if they'll get uh, the offering bags as you leave tonight. Uh, if you'd like to leave him a, an offering on the way out. Uh, it's so good that he came with him. Brought his wife Jennifer with him. So we thank God. Didn't the 11th hour do a wonderful job tonight as well? <laughs> but we love Brother Patrick. And we love his ministry. Uh, I do have a few announcements. As I said, uh, Wednesday night, Dr. David Gibbs won't be here. He cannot be here. So we're just going to continue and finish our, our uh, study on the book of Revelation this Wednesday night. Then Sunday, uh, Sunday morning, the Irwins will be here and their father is flying down. And he is going to be preaching uh, this su next Sunday morning. And then Sunday night, the Irwins will, will be singing for us. Uh, it'll just be a singing service and then we'll close out uh, our camp meeting. All right. Um, we do have, uh, don't make sure you don't miss out. Ron, Ron mentioned it. You want some of the greatest honey you've ever tasted in your life. Jacob's out there. I'm telling you, it's phenomenal. Will you go and buy that? Uh, he makes it himself right out there to the right on your way out. Uh, Brother Jacob's out there. and buy, buy some honey off of him. Make sure you stop by 11th Hour's uh, table and pick up a product. Patrick, I'm going to ask you to go to the vestibule tonight. Don't forget, as you leave, the ushers are there. Everything you give goes to support Brother, Brother Patrick and his ministry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought about something that really was when we were building this church, we had chaplain all the way around. Yeah. And on this fall back here, we were we were up there working and Brother Cordell, most of you know him, Brother Tom Cordell, he shouted down to Leo. Leo, stir up that mud. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, thank you for coming tonight. Make sure you get by. And, uh, and shake Patrick's hand, and uh, we love and appreciate, appreciate him. Let's be dismissed in prayer, and uh, we'll see you again on uh, Wednesday uh, night. Brother Bill Hamilton, would you close us out in prayer?